In most video games, the point is to avoid getting hurt, because if you get hurt too much, the game ends. Two, one, zero, game over. Like so. However, there is a small subgenre of games in which hurting yourself isn't just encouraged, it's the entire point of the game, where pain means prizes and shattered limbs mean big, big wins. Here are seven of our favourites. Enjoy and uh, don't try this at home, yeah? Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Raymond Gonzalez. I do a lot of consulting for this law firm and my testimony in court has cost insurance companies millions. Here's the way it works. You throw yourself in harm's way I write a totally accurate insurance claim, and we all walk away a hell of a lot richer. Almost sounds too good to be true, right? In the Saints Row series, you play as an aspiring gangster looking to rise up the ranks of the criminal underworld from the streets to the penthouse. Or at least you do in Saints Row 1. You are so immediately and wildly successful at crime that by the time of Saints Row 3, your little gang is now a global mega corporation with its own energy drink, and by the time of Saints Row 4, you're literally the President of the United States. King, can you have this naysayer assassinated? Not when you say it publicly. What more fun as a gang leader? We have a country to run. Fun isn't part of the equation. How did you get so rich, you ask? Well, if you played Saints Row anything like the way we did, the answer is mostly insurance fraud. In Saints Row, insurance fraud takes the form of a personally punishing minigame in which you intentionally hurl yourself in front of traffic in order to rack up as large a medical bill as possible. I'm not sure exactly how this counts as insurance fraud, seeing as I am genuinely getting terribly injured and will presumably need legitimate medical care once it's over, but you can't deny I'm making some serious bank over here. In Saints Row 2, insurance fraud added an adrenaline meter, which filled up as you hurt yourself, and once full, could be activated to let you fly further and faster and with aftertouch control, so you could steer yourself into even more deadly obstacles. It is interesting that it still works in Saints Row 4, in which you have superpowers. Are you sure I won't die? Whoa, hi! Just saying, I don't think any insurance company is going to believe Superman when he comes in and says he got injured when he was hit by a car. Why do I do this? If you've ever been to a skate park, you'll know that the most popular trick people are doing isn't the ollie or the kickflip, it's the falling off your board and injuring yourself horribly. EA's Skate series of skateboarding games realised this and introduced a welcome bit of relatable gameplay in Skate 2's Hall of Meat mode. Inspired by the feature of the same name in Skate magazine Thrasher, Hall of Meat is a mini-game in which the entire objective is to injure yourself as much as humanly possible. Players are awarded points, with your score being determined by the height of your fall, the distance travelled, the amount of limbs you manage to shatter, and the number of obstacles you manage to hit on the way. Skate 3 added the ability to tweak while falling, which let you add some style to your doomed plunge, which, if nothing else, will at least add some colour to the news report about your horrible impact trauma death. That'll be some comfort to the family. And when you do collide with something, the game gives you a handy Mortal Kombat style x-ray, so you know exactly which bones you just shattered. Oh. Handy. You can show that to the doctor. Although humanity's complex understanding of physics has paved the way for great advancements like space travel, fibre optic internet and the Large Hadron Collider, arguably its greatest achievement is turning injured video game characters into a hilarious floppy tangle of limbs, a rich scientific field of study that Ubisoft's winter sports simulator Steep takes full advantage of. While Steep stops short of an actual mode in which the point is to horribly maim yourself by ragdolling down a mountainside, it does include an achievement that you can only get by doing something that 9 out of 10 doctors would recommend against. Smashing into a church bell with your face. Why does one doctor recommend that? He just doesn't like you very much. Oh. 
The bell atop the tower of this picturesque village church nestled in the mountains of Switzerland is your target, and your tool is the game's wingsuit. Usually used to glide to safety after doing cool snowboard tricks off a mountain, here used to guide your melon directly into a solid metal bell at over 100 miles per hour. A dangerous proposition, sure, but if you're anything like us, you may have already grievously injured yourself before you've even managed to take off. Two, one, go! <laughs> <laughs> Still, there is a certain haunting beauty to be found in the contrast between your majestic wingsuit soaring and the ragdoll carnage that ensues when you make it to your target. Am I going to manage it? Miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it. Oh, no, I've got it. Surely I've got it. There we go. Oh, what? Yes. No. No. Right, I'm going to try and trophy on this. <laughs> This is definitely the best physics thing. What have you done for me lately, Large Hadron Collider? Exactly. And the idiot dropped the camera too. Thanks a lot. Jeez. It's the first day of shooting the new season and we still got to get the other guys here. And now we need a new director because that one broke the camera. If you never saw Jackass, it was a TV show in which a bunch of skateboarders and skateboard adjacent amateur stuntmen horribly maimed themselves and each other in the name of fun. Fun for the viewer, I mean, they were having a terrible time. As you can imagine, this concept proved somewhat popular, and so in 2007, Jackass got its own tie-in video game, which aimed to replicate the show as closely as possible. What this meant was a collection of mini-games in which the point was to hurt yourself as badly and as hilariously as possible to earn cash and progress through episodes of the show. The benefit to this version of Jackass being a video game meant that it could include stunts that were way too dangerous and deadly to be done on the actual show, such as Pachinko Precipice, in which your jackasser is kicked off a cliff to their... death, I guess? <laughs> Or Suburban Catapult, in which you can launch, say, Johnny Knoxville into a car and watch him shatter his wrist and pelvis. Oh. Of course, it wasn't all violent deaths. Some of the minigames were ostensibly non-painful, like Rooftop Cart Stop, in which the aim is supposedly to stop your shopping cart before you plummet off a roof to your death on the streets below. Or whatever it is that's going on here. I assume it was very emotionally painful for the motion capture performer. Arguably the purest form of this concept, pain, was a download-only title released on the PlayStation Store in 2007. In this game, you load your character, the world's most mid-2000s man, into a big catapult and fire him into a city to see what happens. <coughs> Did you guess what happens is he is horribly injured? If so, congratulations. I see you've been paying attention. Pretty limited in its scope, Pain lets you choose the angle and power of your catapult, and then you fire your guy off into different parts of the city to explore its various opportunities for creative maiming. Maybe you'll land him in a big bowl of cereal. That's fun. Food. Or maybe you'll get hit by a train. Bit more fatal, that. You could also strike different poses while flying through the air, and there were several different modes, including fun with explosives, in which you had to cause as many explosions as possible in three launches, Mime Toss, which is exactly what it sounds like, and Spank the Monkey, in which you had to knock down monkeys as soon as they appeared with, what else, your screaming flailing body. The key to Payne's appeal, though, is that you can hit the select button to instantly reset to where you started. So if a fling goes wrong, or rather doesn't go wrong in the way you wanted it to, you can just get right back into that catapult and try again. Nice! Sadly these days, Payne is forgotten by almost everyone, the exception being Astro's Playroom, the PS5 launch title that referenced Payne in 2020. <laughs> Does this mean there's a reboot on the horizon? No. Had to hurt us one last time, didn't you, Payne?
After Tony Hawk's Pro Skater's enormous success for a brief period in the late 90s and early 2000s, you couldn't move for video games that paired an extreme sport with the name of an athlete. There was Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarding, Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer, and Wakeboarding Unleashed with Sean Murray. Now, I don't know much about wakeboarding, but I thought being leashed was a key component to making the whole thing work. In amongst this, there were not one but two BMX series vying for supremacy, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX and Dave Mirra's Freestyle BMX. Both featured deep, satisfying trick systems, expansive open levels and great soundtracks. For us, what tipped Dave Mirra into the top spot was the fact that every time your rider fell off their bike, rather than a canned animation, they flopped around like they were made of overcooked spaghetti. <laughs> Judging by that impact, spaghetti with no more meatballs. Dave Mirra's Freestyle BMX 2 on PlayStation 2 really lent into this with the inclusion of a new multiplayer mode called Wipeout, which used the flailing of your poor rider's limbs to calculate a high score. The more violently you ragdolled, the higher your score. You could rack up scores of a few thousand points with a standard BMX accident, but it wasn't until you unlocked the Highway 47 Cloverleaf level with its high-speed freeway traffic that you gained the potential for truly massive scores and truly hilarious ragdolling. Wipeout was clearly much more fun than any of the proper multiplayer modes in the game, and we generated some absolutely staggering scores by implementing our ill-advised strategy where you could hold down the triangle button to literally cling to the vehicle that just ran you over and be dragged painfully away by it. I mean, how else are you supposed to get hold of that driver's insurance details? Think about it. The Flat Out games are ostensibly demolition derby style racing games in which you crash and smash your way through the pack, trying to finish as quickly and with as little paint as possible. The big draw of the series were its physics engines, which allowed for realistic collisions and damage to the cars, and, it turned out, ragdoll physics for the drivers themselves if a crash ever caused them to be ejected through the car's windshield. Naturally, this was amazing and hilarious, and the only thing anyone wanted to do when playing Flat Out. And so the developers, Bugbear Games, leaned heavily into this aspect of the game. Firstly, by adding a button that let you launch your luckless driver through the windshield. And secondly, by adding Carnage Mode, a selection of minigames in which the whole point is to fire your driver out of the car and into various obstacles to score points, complete objectives, or just horribly maim them for a laugh. <laughs> These minigames include bowling, where the aim is to knock down all the pins with your driver's screaming face. Field goal, where you launch them over some American football goalposts to glory and also their death. And Royal Flush, where you're attempting to build the best hand of cards you can by smacking into them with a guy who seconds ago was driving a car and feeling pretty good about himself, probably. Not anymore, hey? Still, an important lesson about the dangers of gambling there. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video about video games which uh, encouraged you to cause your player character physical pain. Do you know what will cause me physical pain? If you don't click either of these two videos, the one from us up here and the one from our sister channel, Outside Extra, down here. Oh, and if you'd like to support what we do, hey, there's a supporters club at patreon.com slash oxclub. Feel free to join. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Ah! Kick him. Ah!